Okay, so stress and strain. First, need to understand that there are three different types of forces. You have tension forces, which I'm going to try and draw here. You can have, so you've got some weight hanging from a cable that's fixed to this ceiling. Now this this cable is going to be stretched. It's going to be the force is pu trying to pull it pull it apart. You'd say it was in tension, and you usually use arrows like this to represent that. So this cable is in tension. And now the opposite of tension. So you have a a column or a beam, and it's it can't it's attached to the floor, and on top of that beam you have some weight maybe another beam and it's gravity is trying to pull it down mg now this column is going to have to push that weight back up so you say it's in compression the force is pushing outwards to balance out that force of gravity I'm trying to crush compression is a, cr a crushing force so that column's in compression and finally let's say we have two planks of wood held together by a nail or a rivet if that, may, if that looks clear and you try and pull these two planks apart this this nail is going to be experiencing a shear force two different directions, it's trying to be sort of ripped apart in the middle that's how scissors work you apply shear force to the paper and it rips the paper so this is the shear force okay so when you have forces acting on a material like this what's going to happen? This is statics, which means this, these are all in equilibrium. They're not physic. They can't move in space, so they have to actually stretch or compress. And when a material is under, when it's experiencing a force, you say it's under stress, which has the symbol sigma, at least for compression and tension. When you're talking about axial forces use this symbol sigma and it's equal to the force so in this case mg over the cross-sectional area of the material it's the area perpendicular to this force so with the cable it's going to be that cross-sectional area of the cable so like that you can imagine and the same for this beam, it's going to be that area there you'd use. With shear stress, so shear stress, it's a different symbol, it's the symbol tau. And again, that's equal, that's the ratio of the force to the area, but this time it's the area parallel to the forces so it's this area here the cross-sectional area of that nail parallel to the uh, direction of the force and this has the unit newtons per meter squared which is the the pascal okay so when you have a shear stress or a stress acting on it a material what's going to happen to it like I said it can't move so its dimensions are going to change so let's say we have some rod and it's it can't move at this end and some force is applied to it down here so it this would be in tension it's being pulled it's being stretched what's going to happen is its length is going to change 
it's going to be a tiny amount, but it's going to it's going to change to balance out that force of tension, and that's. And the relationship between this change in length and the original length is what's known as strain. And the symbol for strain is epsilon. And that's equal to the change in length, which we'll call x, over the original length, L, which doesn't change. So L x epsilon is equal to or strain is equal to change in length over the length so that's something you'd measure and if you had the force and the cross-sectional area you'd work out the stress and then you could work out the relationship between the two but I'll talk about that next time okay, and then finally you have something that's known as the oops, the shear strain so let's say we have a some plastic box over here maybe so yeah some metal or plastic box and it can't move it's attached to the ground glued down and you apply a force parallel to this top plane and what's going to happen to it you can imagine okay so this is the force being applied there's going to be a reaction force down here by the ground the whole thing is going to shift to the right in this case. You can imagine that. So you can work out this angle here, because it's going to be such a small angle, it can be approximated to be this change in length here, which we'll call x again, over the original over this original height or length L and the symbol for that is gamma so shear strain gamma is equal to that change in length over the original length or height in this case and this works because it's such a tiny angle Okay, and so yeah, hopefully that explains, gives you a better idea of what stress and strain are. So that's strain. And I'll talk about the relationship between the two in the next video, which is very important.